so like I wanted to do a video talking about YouTube and uh, being on this platform. I would say first of all that um, YouTube is not a career and it is not sustainable for anybody. As you guys know, I um, haven't been doing stuff lately on my channel. Like, you know, if you're going to be a YouTuber, you have to be consistent. Um, and uh, I'm not right now because I'm working on a documentary. So I don't have the time to just like make videos. And you know, what I find like interesting about this, and I kind of want to think about, by the way, before I continue, I just want to <laughs> show everybody the Sneed shirt because like, hello, how awesome is that? I don't know if this is still available, but this shirt is like, it was designed by my friend Boss, and it was like, it's my other, fr my best friend's design. I'm gonna sneeze. This is like a Maddie shirt, so it's super cool. <laughs> but anyways, so um, yeah, the the problem with YouTube is that something that I think starts out for many people as oh, I want to talk about something, like there's something that's interesting to me, and so I want to make a video about it. Um, and it's fun, right? Like when you first start out on the platform, it's fun to like, to make a video, to do a video, to put a video out, out there and then see how it does and see how people respond to it, if people agree with it, if they don't. There's just something interesting about seeing like how people resonate with your work. It's an interesting way to get feedback and then you can learn oh what do people like what do they not like etc and you can integrate that feedback and you can do you know better work or whatever but the opposite side of that is when you start dedicating more time to it right when it's not just an occasional thing that you do when like you are when you feel like you have something to talk about which is how my channel started out I was not, I never wanted to be like a content creator or whatever. I write articles and stuff, not so much anymore because people don't read anymore. I've been forced to like go into this medium if I want to, to, people to know what's going on in the world. Because uh, like y'all just will not read articles. You'll read a headline and maybe the first paragraph and then you guys like drop off. Obviously not all of you, but most of you, especially the younger people. So I think what ends up happening, like as you start to get like traction on your channel, and for me, it took a long time. Like it wasn't until a couple months ago, <laughs> you know, like a year ago that I started to get more than like 35 views on a video I did. And I had like, you know, back then I had like a thousand subscribers and I thought that was like, oh, that's pretty good, you know? But anyways, so like when when you're a small channel like that and you're putting stuff out there, you don't feel the need to maintain a schedule and you're kind of doing it as like a passion project. Like, oh, this is what I want to talk about today. This is what's interesting to me. Or maybe you take the time to think about it and then you do a video. But as your channel grows, you get more and more people subscribing and, and more people coming in that maybe don't know that much about you. And maybe they don't know like what your your work is and they're just kind of coming in maybe because they saw one or two videos you've done and they don't really know anything about you. And it's always interesting to me to see the comments from people who I know are like newer subscribers that obviously aren't that familiar with me, my opinions, beliefs, the things I've covered in the past um, versus like people who have followed my work for a while across multiple platforms and mediums. So what ends up happening though, is your channel starts to grow, you're, you're putting more and more work and effort into it and you have to start investing money to do that. You know, maybe you need to purchase like music for your video or editing software or whatever it is. Like this stuff costs money and it takes time to make like you could see a seven minute video that may have taken 13 hours to edit and put together and 
you don't know that it look it doesn't look like it took that much time to make it and again it can be a short video but hours and hours of work to put that together so eventually it gets to the point where people are like hey i'm devoting so much time to this i should get at least paid to do it so they monetize their channel and uh, the youtube monetization system uh, uses google adsense which is not um it's not very sustainable like this is not a thing that you should do if you want to be able to like uh, make money i mean you could but that's where the problem is right so as people monetize their channel they start to like cater to the algorithm because the goal is to earn ad revenue so when you're making a video at that point now that you've monetized your channel you start thinking like what is the best thing to talk about that the algorithm will pick up because you want as many people to see it so you can get the ad revenue so you start catering your content to that and i have seen this with like a lot of content creators i've seen it with a lot of people that I used to watch, um, I don't have time to watch like YouTube and I don't really want too much anymore because every person that I liked on this platform is like no longer here for whatever reason. They're on other platforms. You can find them elsewhere. And the things that I'm interested in, the topics I want to hear about, you're not allowed to talk about here. So that's another problem with YouTube in general is as your channel grows and over time, YouTube has a constantly changing, constantly evolving terms of service and community guidelines, and they do not grandfather in like your old content. So for example, I had done some, I, I'm in the Northern Virginia area by the you know close to the beltway so it's very easy for me to go into dc and do these kind of like man on the street interviews and that's what i did back in 2020 i interviewed a bunch of people on the street and they talked about a certain thing you're not allowed to question so at the time that i conducted those interviews and like uploaded them they were fine there was no violation of like community guidelines or tos but then that changed and so they went back like a year later and they like took they flagged my channel because of that and that one um community guidelines violation that i got from that like that particular strike is still on my channel and it isn't even anything i said it was i was interviewing people doing journalism you know and and the other thing is that um after 2017, YouTube really started changing how they ran their their platform. You know, they started boosting what they deem and call authoritative sources, which is just mainstream media. So if you're covering something like if you're somebody that's an independent journalist and you're trying to cover a topic, you know, that's something that's like breaking news or current events, your video is not going to get to the top of YouTube. Um, the mainstream media stuff will, and they are already on cable news. It's like if people wanted to watch them, they don't have to go to YouTube to see them. And a lot of these mainstream media outlets also have their own websites. They have their own streaming apps. So there is no reason for that to be boosted on something that is called YouTube. So I have kind of digressed, but the point is, is that, you know, when your channel start as your channel starts growing people tend to start you know changing the way that they do things and altering their behavior changing the way they talk about things because the they realize that the ad sense the ad revenue is not going to be enough to actually make a living off of so then they want to get these like sponsors and you'll see um on channels it'll say this little thing at the top it'll say like paid promotion um, that was something that they just started like telling people that they're doing now. So you'll see a little thing at the top of it, a video, every video that has like a sponsor, it'll say paid promotion there. So, um, people will get paid by sponsors. Uh, and then at that point you have to like, make sure everything you say is advertiser friendly. Same with, you know, monetized videos. Like a lot of the videos on my channel 
the actual important ones, at least important to me, are not monetized at all because they're immediately, like as soon as I go to upload it, everything is automatically demonetized. And some sometimes what happens is I will um, appeal that decision because I'll be like, no, no, no. I've gone through every single thing in here and I know that like none of the... Um, None of the criteria here is like, I'm not talking about anything, any of the naughty things, right? But they automatically do that anyways. So then you have to like initiate an appeal of their decision to automatically restrict ads on it. And um, at, it, it can take like a week for them to do a manual review. And by that point, everyone's already watched it and then they'll then they'll go oh yeah we did a manual review of this and we decided you didn't actually violate any rules so now we will monetize it and it's like oh great thanks you know so i'll just uh you know tell you like what i made this month the month of december which is christmas time 170 dollars <laughs> in ad revenue so obviously i'm not making like an a salary doing this stuff, you know, and I've seen a lot of these like YouTubers who they, um, they'll have something happen, right? Like it's sort of like a fluke because you never know when this is going to happen, right? Where they'll do a video and for whatever reason, it like hits with the algorithm and, uh, it's sort of like out of nowhere, almost overnight, they'll have a video that has like a, quarter of a million views or something like that right and so then there's this idea that they get right you see that and you get the ad money from that one video like i've had this happen to me before like i made a video talking about a certain person you know a, a drama situation and uh, that video got like thirty thousand views within like 24 hours one of my highest performing videos which is ironic because to me it was just like it wasn't something I had thought about really or put a lot of effort into. It was somebody that was starting crap with my friends and I felt the need to defend them. But that's what people like more than me talking about very important like court cases, you know, that will set a legal precedent that will matter to like every single person here. That's how it works though, right? Like you can't choose what the people will be interested in and so you get these, like, if I was one of these people that wanted to be, like, a full-time YouTuber, and I saw that, that, like, oh, this drama is what brings in eyes and, and money, then I would have gone on to make, like, six more videos like that, trying to replicate the success of that. But, of course, I didn't because I'm not interested in that, and I do not think it's professional. But I've seen people people in this space, uh, people that I, some of them I've known who, um, they get involved in like the drama thing and they see that like people like that and not everybody does, but that enough people like it, that it gets you attention. Even if that attention is negative attention, people are still coming to look to see, oh, what is, what is she saying about this person? What is this person? How are they responding? And then there's even like clips channels that will compile like four or five different back and forth between uh, content creators. They're like fighting and put it together in like, you know, a, a drama cut or something. So anyways, people see though that like that is something that is rewarded for whatever reason and so they start kind of leaning into it while pretending that's not what they're doing and that they are over it or whatever uh and i think that there's a failure to recognize like long term the long term consequences of these decisions you know i've seen a lot of people burn bridges you know the other thing that I think is important to recognize is that I'm not your friend, right? I know that because I talk about myself a lot on my channel, I kind of talk about my family, uh, my past, uh, what, what it was like for me growing up. I've talked about when I was homeless and things like that. I think that people, when you're, when you are vulnerable on camera like that, and you're talking into the camera, it is relatable. So people feel like 
they're your friend or that they know you. And not that that's always a bad thing or anything like that, but <clears throat> for, um, you know, people, and then what, what also happens is you collaborate with other channels, other content creators, and sometimes you can form like actual real friendships, but it's the internet. Like the internet isn't real. I wish people would understand that. You know, these pe like these other content creators, you have to recognize it for what it is. This is somebody with their own channel and they're operating a business. They're not your friend. They're somebody that you collaborate with. So, um, yeah, I, I just think that, and I, I, for people who watch channels, like, yeah, like you need to stop seeing these people as your friends and just understand that they're regular people that just happen to make videos or whatever, you know, they're not your friends. Um, if you don't have friends, you should try to get friends in real life. You know, I've been on the internet a long time. I know a lot of people, well... I myself am terminally online and a lot of like the internet is fickle, you know, and a lot of the stuff that happens to people on YouTube is like super fleeting. So I've seen a lot of videos and maybe you guys have seen these too. You can comment and let me know. I've seen a lot of videos where you'll have somebody say like, oh, I quit my $80,000 a year job to be a YouTuber full time. <laughs> I see these videos and I just go, why? What? Why? Why would you quit a job that was paying you a good salary where you had benefits to be a full-time YouTuber? What's the, like, the draw to that? And a lot of those people, when you, you, if you actually go look at their channel, you don't just watch the one video where they say, hey, I quit my job to be a full-time YouTuber. If you follow the story of what ends up happening, a lot of those people regret that decision because when you're working for yourself, which is what YouTubers essentially are doing, you don't get a salary. You don't have benefits. You're not getting the same money every week. You have some freedom right to talk about things you want to talk about in in a limited sense if you have to of course follow the rules here and um in some ways you can kind of set your own schedule right but there is a lot of work that goes into it and then you get to the point where people get very very burnt out because i think that for a lot of channels you know they that want to make money doing this there's a need to constantly put out something new. And at that point, do you even have anything to talk about every single day? Is there something you think is really important that your audience needs to hear about? No, the answer is going to be no. Like right now, as I'm working on a documentary, I can't really focus on anything else. So I haven't made... <laughs> A video really I, I did like one review I did a review video because I just happened to hear something that I was like oh wow somebody's talking about something I've been saying for a while I should review that other than that though it's like I'm I don't have things to say to people every single day you know I've noticed these these things that happen one of the things that really bothered me was I started seeing a lot of people, someone made a video that was like, I'm 30 years old and I have no friends and they're like crying or something in the thumbnail. And of course they cry in the video and they talk about how they're lonely and they don't have any actual friends. Like literally all of us, that's how all, <laughs> you know, that's all of us. But like that video for whatever reason did well in the algorithm because there's a perception that if you are an influencer or a YouTuber, you're not a celebrity. So you're seen as authentic. And so people tend to like trust and believe people that they perceive to be more authentic. So anyways, the, this video does well. And then you start seeing all these other content creators making the same video. And I mean almost word for word, same title, same thumbnail where they're like, they look super sad or they're like crying in the thumbnail and it's the same thing. And it's like, 
what is the value of having 30,000 videos of everybody saying the same thing and copying one person because that person's video went viral and you're just trying to jump on an algorithm to boost your own channel. I mean, it's just very strange to me. That drives me crazy. And it's very common where you see that something becomes popular, like these get ready with me videos where, where you have these like you know, fitness influencers, and they're like, oh, yeah, every day I get up at four o'clock in the morning, and I drink a smoothie, and then I go work out, and it's like, no, you don't. <laughs> this is not your daily routine. This is like this fake version of yourself that you're putting out there because you know that that kind of video will do well because that's what other people's videos that have done well are like you're just like replicating it so it's like a replication of a replication of a replication and i find it to be just like ridiculous and annoying and that is like one of the things i hate about this platform it's just the lack of like there are a lot of very original people here okay but then there's a lot of people that are just like all copying each other and all just trying to jump on the latest trend or whatever is popular in the algorithm and then do these things stand the test of time? Is that something five years from now you're going to look back on and be like, yeah, I'm really glad I made that video. I doubt it, you know? And so this is like the stuff that I think about and that I, I know that my audience is like here for the stuff that I cover news wise and sometimes my opinions on things. I don't feel the need to like constantly be putting myself out there if I have nothing of substance to say. I don't think it adds value. And so I don't know. I just that's I see a lot of these people like there was an article though talking about how all of these influencers are experiencing burnout, right? where they started growing their channels, they get a little bit of fame, a little bit of success, a couple videos go viral, and then they think that that's sustainable. And they'll quit their jobs, or they'll start like throwing themselves into like content, 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 trying to constantly put stuff out there. And like, yeah, of course, you're going to eventually burn out, you're going to run out of things to talk about. And oh, yeah, actually, it's a lot of work a lot of work to put out a video every single day I think it's insane but people feel like they have to maintain that kind of schedule and then you see a lot of these channels where some of the things that they're talking about you can go back and look on their channels it's like they they're almost remaking their own videos or they're talking about a subject that they have already made 10 different videos on and they're not really saying anything new it's just a new day so we have to do a new video and then you have another side of it where you have people and obviously I'm not a credentialism person. I don't care about experts or having a degree. I don't think that that means you're intelligent. In fact, I think the longer that you are in school, in the education system, probably the dumber you are and the more conformist you are, you know. <laughs> So it's not that, but I see a lot of people making videos talking about things that they clearly do not really know anything about. Like, it's obvious you have maybe read one article about this or maybe watched a couple of videos that other people put out and then you start pontificating about things as if you are, you know, an expert in that field or something, which I think is very weird and in a way kind of arrogant. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's strange. It, that is not to say, though, that people can't talk about a topic if they're not super informed on it. Everybody should be allowed to have an opinion and talk about whatever they want. I just find it interesting when people position themselves as like somebody of authority on something that it's obvious they don't actually really know what they're talking about. So I would not recommend anybody like quit their job to be a YouTuber. And I would say that, you know, when, when you have like a channel and you, your channel starts to grow, you will feel pressure to keep that going and keep up the momentum, but it isn't sustainable. So I would not recommend doing the thing that most people do and trying to cater to an algorithm or cater to 
you know, whatever is, I support the current thing, whatever the trend is of the moment, I think that that's not a good thing. And I would, the advice I would give to people, you know, as somebody with a super small channel is to not do it, <laughs> not do that. Um, you know, I'm glad that this is not like my full-time job or whatever. I want to do other things. But yeah, I mean, I wonder too, like what the what is the lifespan of a content creator? Like, how, what is the average lifespan of a YouTube channel? You know, you can't just do this stuff forever, right? What is it maybe five years, seven years, 10 years? And, um, you know, at that point, you, you, you've got to move on to something else, right? Or, or maybe you can still make, maybe you can make videos forever. But I would just find it boring. And I think a lot of um, people that were, big on YouTube at one point, I think that they kind of use that, the platform that they gain to then go do other things, right? And that doesn't mean you don't have a channel anymore, but maybe it's not your main thing. I don't know. I just, I would never give people advice to like do this for a living because it isn't a career. It isn't sustainable. I don't see a future here on this platform. Certainly not the way it's uh, running right now. If it continues down the same road it's been, I believe that at, at a certain point, an alternative is going to displace it. So anyways, those are just my thoughts. And uh, yeah, um, obviously, as you guys know, I'm doing a documentary, very busy. And that is something that like, I'm very, very proud of. I've never, there's never been a YouTube video I've made where I've been like, Oh, I'm super proud that I made that. You know, I'm really glad I made a video talking about like the toxicity of modern women. Like I'm I I do it for fun sometimes. <laughs> but it's not something that like I think is going to leave a legacy. What I'm doing right now, the documentary I'm working on now, that is something that I'm super proud of and I believe it's the kind of thing that 20 years from now, I will be proud that I made that and that I told that story and that I got it out there. And I think it'll be something that will always be relevant to whatever time period you're in. Like for that story, you know, if you don't know what it is, it's the fake uh, FBI run Michigan Gretchen Whitmer fednapping plot hoax caper, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've gone through everything and obviously the government lied here and framed innocent people and some of those people are still in prison right now. Some of them have been acquitted and are free men right now and trying to rebuild their life. And so it's a fascinating story of corruption of an agency that is out of control and, uh, you know, arguably like the biggest criminals in our country that operates like the mafia. In fact, one of the guys I've interviewed who is in prison right now, he's, face he's facing sentencing and they're trying to throw him in jail for the rest of his life. He said, you would rather deal with the mafia than the FBI <laughs> because at least the mafia has like a code of honor. Like they're not going to go after your kids or your family or something like that. You know, they have an honor system and a code and he's like, these people don't. There like isn't a level that they won't sink to to try to perpetuate their own existence, you know, and advance their own careers and agenda and the money going to them. And it's very, very interesting stuff. So anyways, that's what I'm working on. And that I think is going to leave, that'll be a legacy to leave. And that's something that I believe will make a true impact. So that's my thoughts um, on the sustainability of being on YouTube, which obviously there really isn't any. Wee and Sneed.